the lives of document photography as a project uh, is uh, a research process which we carried out and uh, is an exhibition showing uh, the works of uh, artists and photographers documenting the visible world and uh, built environment. I think that that, that particular aspect uh, is not syn synonymous with how we understand photography now. And we want to, to bring back or to look again at this possibility of making a visual argument. When, you, when, when we talk about architecture, we always talk about project. So there's always a project in architecture. In photography, we don't necessarily talk about that there is a project, but I tend to, to like the works better when the photographers and the artists are, uh, um, are making what you could call a project. And a project in this sense is that there is an argument that has to be translated into, uh, but you have to convince someone else of your argument and you do that not by words, and not by making a proposal in terms of a piece of architecture, but you do it by organizing images that come from reality. Uh, this means you, you have to do a lot of research. This means there is a lot of uh, extra material. There is a, a huge amount of photographs, probably, that you have to organize in order for the argument to work. And I think this aspect of, of the, if you could say there is a complete project, this means there is an output, but below the output, there is a lot more material. And these materials are important, and they are rarely shown. And also, we are not used to understand that a photographic project has that type of materials. So this is, for this show, we are interested to go into that aspect. Uh, that also means that, that, let's say, half of the uh, artists in the show we, we knew before, the other half we did not know, because even if we know the people, there is still, and the projects, there is still a lot of elements that we do not know. So uh, I think this, this was for me the most interesting aspect that I like certain projects, but I still have many questions. And these questions I, uh, we were able to dig into. Uh, maybe that, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, over the time we have been uh, exploring the collection of uh, CCA, the photographic collection of CCA. Um, maybe the most peculiar aspect is that uh, <clears throat> it tried always to include the most uh, complete projects, like uh, not final, and uh, therefore we had the possibility to look at uh, <clears throat> the process to get to some results. And in a way, we try to mirror this uh, position in the show. When you, when you go into the collection of the CCA and you, and you look at the objects that, uh, that are there, there are, in a way, two ways how you can look at it. So one way is you get this uh, object that is, in a way, historicized. It's a, it's a small object that is in a cellophane, that is, uh, has a number, that has a, a lot of statements about it and um, therefore it already has a certain importance. This is of course the kind of archival aspect of it and I, I think it, it has a big impact if you, if you look at the objects that are in the collection. But the other part of the collection is that it has this, this aspect of a complete projects in which you can dig deeper and the projects, or in a way what is shown if you don't look at the objects as a kind of a perfect objects, they keep on asking questions in, you know that they were conceived with questions in the time when they were made, 40, 50 years ago, uh, but they still have questions for our time. So I think the collection somehow is constantly fighting this. So how, how is something a, his, a historic document? and an object of value. And at the same time, the, the objects have to say something about now. And I think this is, uh, uh, this is something interesting 
to deal with and it's also difficult to deal with because you have to choose which one you prioritize. Um, we don't want to neglect the fact that something is an object. We think it's important. The photographic object is a, has a beauty of itself. Uh, but it cannot become a kind of a sacred object. It has to still be about the intentions of the artist, of the time in which the work was made. Um, and therefore, we would like to use the exhibition to show the objects, but to show them as a complete uh, series, so you, so you can have both, so you can learn from what you can see, but you can still uh, appreciate the objects as objects. And the exhibition in the end is about, is much more about why they were made. We were talking about this idea, wh why, what's the relation between photography and, and architecture? Or, or maybe it's a, it's a question that keeps coming up. So what is the relation between photography and architecture? When I was studying uh, architecture at the Berlager in uh, 2000, um, there, there, the idea of architecture was how it was not about making objects, it was about how to understand urbanity, how to understand the city, how to describe it, how to design it. Uh, and there were two types of approach. So either you could make very abstract diagrams, uh, displaying things graphically, quantifying them, and then deciding what the new quantification should be. Uh, the other was, uh, was uh, done through image, and, and there uh, Stefano Boeri was one of the tutors, and he came to explain that, uh, well, when he was showing the projects that he was doing together with Basilico, together with Armin Linke, um, that the world can be as easily described by images, and it is as precise. Uh, and I remembered we had a lot of discussion about this. I was, of course, very interested in the fact that you don't have to quantify and you can say, look, there is an image, and this image describes perfectly fine uh, how we could approach the new idea of the city. Uh, we don't have to abstract it first. We can basically look what is there and define what is interesting. Well, if it's not about the object, if we if architecture in this sense is about what you could say the built environment or the city or what is urban, uh, the image of it is, is as real and as important as the, as the graphical description of it. And I think this to me was a, a big, uh, it was helping me a lot to understand that as a photographer and an artist, you can have a place within the, pushing of what is architecture and how a city and a landscape can evolve. I think that each of the works that we have in the exhibition have a certain documentary strategy. They are all different. They all use a different aspect of it. But they all start by looking at reality in a, you could say, in a non-spectacular way and trying to understand through photography what is in front of them. Uh, what you can say, very simple, is uh, probably photography cannot but document what is in front of us because it's dealing with the visible uh, aspect of uh, our world. So this is why probably mm, we took again or we continue or we are keeping on thinking about uh, documentary as a possibility we have to express our ideas towards what we see. But uh, this, this definition of uh, documentary as a misleading uh, aspect of photography belongs uh, to, the, to the 70s, even earlier, because uh, Walker Evans did that the definition of documentary style because it includes the position of uh, the photographer itself in its project. Documentary, as we said before, includes the personal uh, position and the personal ideas that uh, every photographer has to towards the world, towards what he sees, towards what he decides to, to document, to photograph. Part of the process for the research uh, was done by Studio Visit. 
It means that uh, everybody we could meet, we met either via Zoom for discussions, one or two discussions or three, uh, and in some cases we could uh, properly visit uh, the studio of the artists. And that happened in, uh, in Vancouver with uh, Jeff Wall. It happened uh, in, uh, in Travel Through Italy, where we met uh, in the studio of uh, Gabriele Basilico, Stefano Boeri, and Giovanna Calvenzi. Uh, we could find uh, at Linea di Confine a copy of uh, Luigi Ghiri Atlante. We could meet uh, Guido Guidi, as you said, in his studio. We could travel to Berlin to meet uh, Annette Kelm, to meet uh, Susanne Kriemen, to meet uh, the archive of uh, Michael Schmidt uh, with Thomas Vesky, that is his, the curator at the moment, and to meet uh, Thomas Struth. And also we could go to Japan to meet uh, Takashi Homa, Naoya Takeyama, and uh, Tokuko Shioden. When we go to studio visits, and we think we know a work, already, and the boxes are opened and uh, everything is laying on the table, there is immediately 50 new questions coming. I think the most surprising aspect of doing the studio visits is that uh, when uh, all the boxes are taken out of the archive and you, they are on the table and you start to, to go through it, is that you see a lot of things that, that, that could fit in a project, there is always a huge amount of material, and this huge amount of material, even I, I'm of course uh, trained, <laughs> trained in making selections, I could not make the selection. And I think this is very interesting, and then you start the conversation, why is something in, why is something out, and you arrive very quickly to very fun fundamental photographic aspects of, uh, of what Stefano would say, you know, what is the photographic aspect of it. So what is, uh, why is something working in a photo and why not? And I think this is something that when you do these studio visits, uh, you learn quite quickly that the idea of the photographic is also linked to the author. So the author has to have a certain, well, recognizable maybe style of or it's, it's never a composition, but it's more a kind of a feeling. I think for me, studio visit uh, were uh, <clears throat> the, the way to, to stay documentary towards the work of other people. This, I think, was very important. Um, we realized that uh, archives of photographers are different, I think. And also, it's very different the way um, artists are uh, using their unpublished. But most probably, our approach to the unpublished is um, an, uh, an attempt to leave uh, <clears throat> these works speaking uh, on themselves without our, um, our uh, <clears throat> intrusion as much as possible. So I think uh, studio visit were important uh, for this. Why now is, a, is of course a, an important question that we ask to ourselves several times. Most probably we can say that uh, the legacy of uh, many authors is uh, important to, to keep alive. And something else we can say or we could uh, understand that some critical positions toward the landscape, uh, we can call it uh, either protest or activist, can be included in the, in the documentary. So this critical position is not uh, a genre in itself, but documentary can include that. So for the future, which is our uh, uh, everlasting question, we can still look into the documentary to look for new questions and maybe for new answers. Why it's important to do this project now is that I, I feel that in every of these attempts to, to, to look at reality or to look again at reality, there is different methods being used. And these, besides that there is a 
thematic of, of each project, there is also a method. So there is a, a method and a form and there is an agency. So all, all these things you need. And these methods, I think you can, you can see also loose from, the, from, from what is actually photographed. And these methods can be repeated. We should not forget them. They are ways to deal with reality. They are ways to deal with truth. They are ways to deal with documents. I think that is one part. And I think the other part, what, why, why we have to do this exhibition now, is that, that uh, it is, it's important to, to highlight that a lot of these projects were about uh, the future. The future at that moment in time. We can now only look at these uh, things as documents of the past, but they were all imagined to be about something that is going to happen or something that is going to change. So I feel this idea of dealing with the future we should not forget. And it, it is something that, that is for the future generation important to keep doing. And therefore we have to show that, it, that there is a certain baseline of it and this baseline yeah, we should understand and we should look at. We should look at it again and again and again. <laughs>